Hello fellow audio nerds, I'm Steph and this is Major Hi-Fi. This upcoming weekend is Can Jam New York City. And so this is such a great event for being able to take a listen to uh, things that you might not otherwise get a chance to listen to. For example, there will be lots of headphones, IEMs, DAPs, DAX, amps, all the things. Um, but one product in particular that I wanna call attention to is the Dunu DK4001. Now, these earphones will be unveiled at CanJam for a lot of you uh, to listen to uh, for the first time. But if you can't go to the conference, you might also be kind of curious about these earphones. Well, I got a chance to take a nice listen to them this week, so I'd like to share with you my experience. Let's go back in time. I'll share with you my first impressions, and then I'll meet you right back here for my overall thoughts. All right, here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to my place. So today I've got with me the Dunu DK4001. So let's see what's inside the box here. All right, so as you'll see here, there's a pretty um, detailed package here. So first things first, there's a nice leather carrying case here uh, for holding the earphones, taking care of it, some documentation, there are a plethora of ear tips, uh, some spin fit tips here, some silicone uh, Dunu tips, as you'll see, um, and then some comply foam tips here. There's a cleaning tool right there, an adapter three and a half millimeter to uh, 6.35 millimeter, an airplane adapter, and then uh, some more documentation covering kind of the, the specs and the whole design of, of the earphones two-sided there and then something really interesting these are adapters actually that um that you can switch out on this cable there's a 2.2 millimeter 3.5 millimeter unbalanced 3.5 millimeter balanced and then a 4.4 millimeter balanced so you've got three balanced options and then the unbalanced 3.5 millimeter um this is very very cool excited to tell you all about it and then of course are the earphones themselves um they come with this cable uh, that detaches uh, with M via MMCX connectors there. Um, so yeah, let's get into the design of these. As for the driver housings themselves, they're a small to medium size, uh, not too big, not too small. Um, and of course they have the hook behind the ear sort of style, like a typical IEM. The driver housing has this black uh, kind of matte like finish on it with just a little bit of detail in silver. And this is actually made of zirconium, a uh, liquid alloy metal. And this metal is kind of interesting. It's three times stronger than stainless steel, but it actually is more lightweight. Um, it doesn't feel as kind of uh, like harsh and cold. Uh, rather, yeah, it just, it feels smooth. Uh, and it's also very, very durable. And the cable is really good looking and durable as well. Um, it's kind of got this dark copper look to it. And um, in, in regard to the actual build, it feels super solid. Um, actually, this feels like one of the best Dunu cables that I've, that I've seen, um, but it's also uh, uh, an, an innovative cable. And obviously I'll get into the design of that, but the, as for the connectors, they feel strong, they feel durable, uh, the connections feel super secure. Um, so I'm really psyched on that actually. So let's see how they fit in the ears. Uh, I definitely like the size of these earphones. Yeah, so right now I've got, oh, pretty sound isolating too. So right now I've got the small, um, the smallest um, Dunu silicone ear tips that were included in the package. But something actually that is worth noting is that the small ear tip here actually looks more like a medium to me in relation to how most other IEMs, their, their ear tips seem. So if you do have like particularly small ear canals and you typically use a small ear tip, you might not have as great of luck and you might find yourself wanting to get a smaller ear tip. Um, Cause this is the small, it seems more like a medium to me, but that aside, uh, it fits well in the ear, feels secure. Definitely because of the size of these driver housings, it is resting a little bit on my ear, but it's not uncomfortable at all. It feels really good actually. Um, and then I am getting a nice seal in the ear canal with those ear tips. Now the cable of this 4001 is 
actually to me one of the most interesting things about the earphones themselves. Now, <clears throat> it has a very innovative design feature here and I'll demonstrate for you now. So rather than it being a, an adapter, um, this is a four pin connector that this cable actually terminates to. And then that four pin connects to any of these kind of, um, you know, connection types that you might want. So if you're the type of person who likes to listen to a wide variety of sources, um, some of them including balanced, this is gonna be a great option to be able to switch between things. If you need a three and a half millimeter, but then you have a 4.4 on your player and you like to listen to that. So anyway, it's a really cool design. And also something worth noting is that because of this sort of adaptability with all the different connectors here, it's a really good option for those that want an earphone that they can grow with. Like maybe perhaps down the road, you're gonna want something with a 4.4 um, you know, output. And with this earphone, you, can, you don't have to switch out the entire cable. You can just switch the adapter super quickly and easily. Other than that, you'll notice that there are four conductors here. Uh, and those conductors uh, are actually a combination of copper and silver, OCC copper to be exact. And each strand of this conductor is also has an OCC copper shielding around it. And that sort of helps to eliminate the electromagnetic interference, um, you know, tries, tries to avoid that. So I am very excited to take a listen to these because I think this cable is really interesting, at least on the tech side of things. And I'm curious to see how it sounds for sure. But before I do that, let's get into the drivers. Inside of these driver housings is a hybrid driver system. There are four balanced armatures and one dynamic driver. The dynamic driver is dedicated more so to the low frequencies and the middle frequencies. Two of the balanced armatures are dedicated to the high frequencies and then the other two are dedicated to what Dunu refers to as the ultra high frequencies. So um, expecting some good high frequency extension, I guess. And then in addition to the actual driver setup, there's also something uh, patented design by Dunu in here, the ACIS. The ACIS is a spiral pathway and Dunu says that the whole goal behind this is to create base extension uh, or to aid in base extension. So we'll see how it sounds. Uh, very, very interested. It seems like it'll have kind of some nice qualities to it for sure. All right, I was just listening to the song Prince Johnny by St. Vincent, and the kick drum definitely has more drama to it than it usually does. It sounds deeper and it just feels active, like there's a lot of spaciousness around that kick drum, and that leaves space for all the other low frequency stuff going on in there, like the bass and the synths that have a lot of low end as well. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely a really kind of fun moving kick drum, contributes a lot to the groove. All right, I was just listening to the song uh, Thanks For Nothing by Middle Brother. And this, uh, the mid-range is really nice. The, the bass guitar in the song definitely feels like very full, um, has a little bit of emphasis, but doesn't step on anything else's toes. Um, that sort of contrasts really well with the acoustic guitar, which the attack on the guitar feels really nice and um, uh, has a lot of movement to it um, in a really attractive way. And that actually contrasts with the mo more melodic guitar, which feels more like it's in the mid-range uh, or, you know, the middle part of the mid-range and feels separated from that, that rhythmic acoustic. The melodic guitar actually, um, it has great sustain actually, and that really shows the harmonic complexity of these earphones. And then, there are these like snare brushes that kind of like march along with the song and they sound like they have a lot of nuance, both just in their sound quality and you know, their harmonic complexity that's coming through, but also dynamically, you can really kind of hear the differences between, um, you know, the quieter notes and the more accented notes. And that actually also sort of reminds me too of the vocal, which sounds, it has a little bit less like chest uh, sound to it. It's more kind of in the face, has a little bit more presence, but a lot of really beautiful nuance that contributes to the emotional impact of that voice.
I do like the shape of these high frequencies. I was just listening to the song Cleva by Erica Badu, and I actually, this is probably one of the favorite, uh, you know, the favorite ways that I've heard the hi-hat in that song before. It actually feels more balanced. The hi-hat's a little bit less chunky, um, but it does kind of still maintain its sense of like dynamic detail and kind of harmonic complexity, like the character, the sound character of it is still there, but it just feels a little bit like it leans uh, in the upper direction. And as a result, it feels like more well balanced with the with the rim, um, the rim shots of the snare. Um, similarly, uh, Erica's voice is really, really um, beautiful sounding, lots of nice detail on the consonants. Um, also, like Taylor's uh, Hollingsworth's voice from before, um, definitely leans more toward the face and the throat. Um, not quite as much rasp to her voice as I um, as I usually hear, but definitely a sense of airiness and a sense of just like overall kind of aesthetic prettiness that comes that comes through with it. So I do enjoy it, and it's but it's not neutral. It's got some character for sure. And a very nicely done soundstage here, listening to the song Miles Runs the Voodoo Down. Uh, and the difference between the guitars, the wide panned guitars, keys, even like the drums and cymbals at certain points, um, contrast really well with the middle panned trumpet, which feels even and directly in the center. And this sort of spaciousness and contrast in the whiff um, sounds really good with the drums, uh, particularly the drum room mics I can hear very well because of the evenness in the mid-range, but then also it really helps to create the sense of depth. I get a sense though, because of kind of the quickness or just like the dynamic activity here, that the, uh, the, depth, the depth comes through anyway, um, has a lot of nice nuance to it. But in regard to the depth, something that was sort of interesting in this song is that the electric guitars um, you know, definitely have some high mids in them. And that part of the electric guitar, kind of the attack, more of the presence of it, sits a little bit forward closer to the listener. Whereas like the body of that guitar sits a little bit further back in space, closer to where like the keys are typically. So it's sort of an interesting sense of depth that's going on with these earphones. And then as for the height, yeah, I mean, kind of the low toms, the, uh, the bass guitar really anchor it down below. And then, wow, those cymbals and just actually even like overtones with the horn uh, in the high end really contrast very well. And there's a great sense of extension up there that really creates a lot of space for the soundstage and for the sense of height. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna keep listening throughout the week and uh, kind of analyze the sound signature a little bit more. And then I will meet you back at the major hi-fi office for my overall thoughts. All right, here we go. Overall, the low frequencies of the uh, the Dunu DK4001 are really interesting because there's a nice sense of subbiness and low-end extension to them, as well as another sort of boost right around the fundamental of many kick drums. So as a result, uh, what ends up happening is that you get this really nice sense of kind of energy and quickness and spaciousness around the lows while maintaining its bigness. This really comes through as a sense of emotional impact, especially in songs and music that utilizes low frequencies to create that emotional impact. So if you like hip hop, pop, R&B, uh, anything like that, I think you'll really uh, enjoy the low end of these earphones. The mid range of the earphones is nice. Um, there's a really good sense of thickness in the low mids, sort of adding beef kind of to uh, bass guitars, cellos, all of that kind of stuff. Additionally, the middle part of the mid-range feels really even and it really maintains a sense of harmonic complexity that is very important for acoustic instruments as well. As for the high mids, it's actually kind of interesting because there's a bit of a cut in the lower part of the high mids and then that's balanced by a boost that's in the higher uh, area of the high mids. So as a result, vocals tend to lean a little bit forward and focus more on like the throat and the face rather than the chest and the body. And this sort of boost also affects the way that you kind of interpret the attacks of instruments. Um, but it's done in a really important way, I think, because not only does it bring things forward uh, in the mix uh, and adds a lot of clarity to it, but 
because of the evenness of the mid-range, um, those instruments still maintain a sense of harmonic complexity. As for the highs of the earphones, uh, they definitely have a nice sense of clarity and just like overall sense of detail. There's a bit of a boost in the lower treble, and then there's another boost in the upper octave, sort of leaving a little bit of a dip right in the upper treble. Now, as a result, uh, vocals sound very articulated, uh, the consonants come through super clearly, although sometimes this ends up translating to a little bit of sibilance depending on the vocal. And then the area of the, up, the upper octave that is emphasized sort of sits almost beyond the range of like audible airiness and rather kind of sits more so in the sense of like a feeling of airiness rather than hearing it, if that makes sense. Um, so it really kind of creates a nice sense of just a feeling of extension and a feeling of, you know, kind of uh, spaciousness over top mixes as a whole. Now, because of the sort of quickness and dynamic uh, dynamic movement and also the sense of separation that I've described with the rest of these earphones, that translates pretty directly to a great sense of width. And because the um, instruments that are panned far out contrast so precisely and so well with instruments that are panned in the middle, that actually also translates to a sense of spaciousness and realism when it comes to a sense of depth. However, that realism sort of translates then or transitions to a sense of of character because the high mid boost sort of takes instruments that have high mid presence and brings that part of the instrument forward in the mix a little bit so for example a guitar you'll hear the attack of it up closer to you but the body of that guitar kind of sits further back so it really is an interesting sense of depth but additionally because of the spaciousness i've described again um and also because of the evenness of the mid-range, room mics and reverbs come through um, and almost sometimes feel emphasized in a way that really creates a sense of kind of, you know, you can really hear the room that instruments have been recorded in. And it sets things back in space as well. Now, as for the sense of height, because of the low frequency sub extension, and then how I've described this high frequency extension that goes way into the upper octave, you really get a very clear and nuanced sense of height that feels like there's really a linearity, there's really a, a sense of uh, difference between kind of where every instrument is sitting. Um, so it's very well done in my opinion, creates a lot of space and is super fun to listen to. Overall, the DK4001 is a really awesome and innovative design and I think it's something that will be great for audiophiles that like to listen to different types of devices or want something that they can really grow with. Because of the different cable connectors types, uh, if you want to get kind of different types of DACs, uh, DAPs, amps, uh, you can really do that with these earphones. Additionally, the sound stage is really nice. The sound signature is really fun um, and definitely sounds like uh, it has a great sense of character that to me is very aesthetically pleasing and I think a lot of people will like it as well. Anybody that likes that kind of uh, a little bit of boost in the low end while maintaining a sense of harmonic complexity in the mid range. so much for watching. For another perspective on the Dunu DK4001, be sure to check out the description box down below. I've left a link to my colleague's review there on the Major Hi-Fi blog. And additionally, if you thought this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. All right, I will see you next time. Have a great can jam if you're going to the conference. If not, um, well, I hope that this sort of makes you feel like you're a little bit closer to it. Anyway, I will see you next time. Bye.